It also reveals that the district director, as the chairperson of the adjudication committee, flouted the procurement processes in the appointment of Boniwe Rehabilitation Center to host the spring camp for metric, and also Lee Africa PTY LTD and Zinoloa's PTY LTD to transport learners. That the district director invited service providers to quote and suggested the amounts per learner and this, um, and this amounted to cover coaching. So he, 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 she, she, she told service providers what amounts to use in the quotation. That the service providers in question were issued with multiple orders for the same services within the same period in order to keep the amount below the threshold of 500,000 and therefore avoiding to go to tender as required. Now, in this instance, it's what we call splitting of a bid, because in terms of treasury regulations, once something that you need to procure is above 500,000, you, know you need to go to an open tender. You don't call for quotation. If something that is below 500,000, you can then call for quotation. But once above 500,000, it then you don't have to go for an open competitive tender. Now, in this instance, the bids were, 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 were split such that from, from the face value, they appeared to be less than 500,000. Whereas, Boniwe Rehabilitation Center quoted for the total amount of 1,260,000. 1, so the quote from this, this rehabilitation center was 1,260,000. And therefore, it was supposed to be advertised for tender. But the district, therefore, they split the bid so that it, it, they appear to be less than 500,000. So they will say this is a separate bid for food, separate bid for this, separate bid for that. Whereas it was one company doing everything. And this also amounted to a district director acting beyond her delegated authority to approve Boniwe Rehabilitation Center and therefore splitting the splitting of bid of quotation was done inten intentionally. The district, director, district directors are kept at a particular amount, 500,000, to approve. Anything beyond that must go to the HOD uh, for, for, for approval. So this amount or this process did not go to the HOD because the bleeds were split. And that's why we was saying it was indeed intentional. That Boniwe Rehabilitation Center was appointed before submitting quotations. The district director made a submission to the HOD to appoint Boniwe Rehabilitation Center on the 23rd of September 2020. And the quotation was only received on the 14th of October 2020. So the HOD is made to sign the approval of Boniwe Rehabilitation Center, uh, the submission. Um, while the, 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 the quotation is received on the 14th of October uh, 2020. There is evidence that metric intervention program team of Herikwala District conducted the assessment and found the facility not suitable to host the spring camp. So in terms of evidence, the, the, the team that was responsible for the metric intervention program found the venue not to be suitable to host the metric camp. It is also evident that Ikopo High School facility was, was, was available to, to the district to be used as a, as a host venue, but the district had no intention to utilize it, which was in fatal conflict with the position of the department to use available schools as part of capping costs. So there's a school in Ikopo. Uh, Klopo High School that was available has boarding facilities. It was available to be used as a to host the metric camp, but the district decided to shy away from it and look for this uh, Boniwe Rehabilitation Center and therefore incur the cost that we could have avoided as a department because this school belongs to the department, and therefore we could not have paid except for food and other necessary things for for, for the camp. Based on these findings. The report recommend, recommended that disciplinary processes be preferred against the district director 
the acting uh, CES uh, chief education specialist uh, who's involved in the, in the process, as well as one assistant director from supply chain management in the district. So it's recommending that uh, we prefer charges against the three officials. And I am satisfied that the report presents a case to be answered by the implicated officials and have since referred the report to the head of department for immediate implementation. On the audit done by the, on the procurement of PPEs by the provincial treasury, and I'm sure colleagues will recall uh, this story uh, around uh, the allegation of uh, having procured uh, uh, PPEs at a maximum or even higher prices. As a department, we welcome the finding of the audit report issued by the KZN Provincial Treasury into the expenditure on the personal protective equipment for a period March to June 2020. The audit conducted by the Provincial Treasury was against the background of a public narrative propagated by some who we believe thrive and probably make a living based on dishonest and telling lies that the Department of Education had procured the COVID-19 essentials at the maximum or even higher prices in breach of Treasury Note 5. The department stood accused of having failed to negotiate down the prices and this narrative continued in spite of the available evidence to the contrary. In its report, the provincial treasury found that the KZN Department of Education was able to achieve significant savings during the procurement process through price negotiation with the PPE suppliers. The findings indicated that the department spent 487,444,611 uh, in procuring and delivery of PPEs to schools and other offices. The report says had the department not negotiated the prices and paid at maximum prices as prescribed by the provincial or the national treasury, the expenditure would have increased to 873 million 711,267. This indicates savings of up approximately 386 million 263,555. And you will recall, colleagues, that uh, we did write a report at some stage as a department to the Premier about this, where we were giving evidence that uh, actually prices were negotiated. And the provincial treasury is, is actually affirming the report that we had submitted to say it was not true that the department had procured at a maximum price or even higher as, as alleged by, by certain people. The officials involved painstakingly negotiated with the, service, with the service providers. I'm sure some of you will also recall there was an article which uh, was published by... Uh, I think Mercury, where service providers were complaining that uh, KZ and DOE is squeezing them to the bone in terms of prices. But again, that was ignored because some had to run this narrative that the department was procuring it at a maximum price. Now, provincial treasury audit is proving that we actually saved. In fact, they are not say <laughs> they, they advise us not to say savings. They are saying we avoided an expenditure of 386 million 263,555. So if we were procuring at a maximum level that was determined by the provincial by the national treasury, which would have been illegal, I mean which would have been legal by the way, because it was the price that was set national. So we were allowed to procure up to that particular maximum price. Had we done so the department will have spent 873 million, uh, 873 million 711,000, uh, if we did so. But because of this painstaking process of negotiating prices down, we only spent 487 million, 400, I mean 444,000, thereby avoiding incurring another expenditure of 386 million, 263. And this is a significant achievement on the side of the department. And these savings have ensured that the department is able to extract maximum value for every rent spent, thereby ensuring sufficient PPEs are made available to schools. 
and we're hoping that these findings from by the provincial treasury will now put the, the, the matter to rest and allow the department really to continue doing its work under no particular cloud. And on conclusion, I wish to commit the department yet again on striving for clean governance. I call upon all officials to work according to book and avoid any temptation to be in conflict with the law and to, to misuse public funds. There shall be no protection for any official who commits wrong. The audit outcome by the provincial treasury constitutes a necessary relief for all the good meaning and hardworking officials who have unfortunately been tried and convicted in the court of public opinion. These officials have been under severe strain for the alleged wrong they never committed. The strain has also been suffered by their families who have had to contend with the public narrative that their loved ones have participated in corrupt activities. It is important that the society protects those officials, government officials, who work diligently and with utmost honesty. My message to all DOE officials is that those who work according to the prescripts of the law have a reliable partner in me. We will weather the storm together and we shall always, and we shall, as we always do, be vindicated where we are right. Those who participate in transgressions will treat you as enemies of the people and will not hesitate to act decisively against any wrongdoing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, MC. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Uh, we will now open this session for questions of clarities. We'll have only two rounds. We'll identify the first uh, hands in the first round, and then the second one. Then thereafter, those that will want to have one-on-one -on -one will afford you that opportunity. Please identify yourself in terms of your name and the media house you are from. We're starting one, two, three, four in the first round, in that order, number one. Uh, thank you, MEC, for this uh, swift response to this particular matter. Uh, can I just find out, well, I'm going to talk about it from IBD's news. Uh, can I find out if criminal charges will be, will be opened against the uh, implicated officials? I understand that the department is taking its own action by way of internal disciplinary action, but public money has been spent. Um, will at least there be attempts to bring in law enforcement so that this money is at least recovered. Um, if you've been able to save 300 million rand, another person could look at it and then say, well, it means government is always over budgeted because government is traditionally been overspending. Will you not then take this as a lesson to say, um, we're coming out of that briefing, uh, the outcomes, venue not suitable for intended purpose. That's the finding of an investigation by the KZN Department of Education relating to the Harry Gwala District Metric Boot Camp that was held last year and saw students cramming into a venue during a time when strict COVID-19 protocols were flouted. He also says a case to be answered by the officials involved as the MEC delves into the procurement and funding of this process.